After traveling 1.3 million miles, Orion knows there's no place like home. When it's time to return to Earth, there are some key steps that must happen. Orion will attempt the first skip entry ever for human-rated spacecraft. The maneuver is like a thrown stone skipping the surface of a pond before sinking. The capsule first uses the upper part of Earth's atmosphere to reduce speed and generate lift, so it skips back out into space. After the skip, Orion will make a final re-entry, experiencing temperatures around 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit and decreasing speed significantly. A system of 11 parachutes will slow the capsule down even more before it splashes down off the coast of California. There, teams from the US Navy and NASA will inspect the capsule for hazards before it is lifted onto the recovery ship for the journey back to land. What other things about Artemis 1 are you curious about? Let us know using the hashtag Artemis. A series of 11 parachutes will be deployed uh, in sequential fashion. A very dramatic return to Earth lying ahead for the Orion spacecraft. Our design is almost exactly the Apollo design. The, the shape of the mains, the shape of the drogues. The only major difference is we are bigger. Uh, Apollo weighed roughly 13,000, 13,500 pounds, and we weigh 22 and change, 1,000 pounds. And so our parachutes are larger because we have more energy to take out of the system, and our parachutes are stronger. So at a fundamental level, all round parachutes are alike. The Orion system has drogue parachutes that initially decelerate the system, and because they're deployed at a much higher velocity, they're made of ribbons. The ribbons can take the fluttering associated with high velocity deployments much better than a solid canopy can. And once the system slows down, it deploys the mains. The mains are much closer to a personnel chute. They're called ring sails. The major difference would be that a personnel chute could be 28 to 30 feet in diameter, and a CPAS main is 116 feet in diameter. So the Orion parachutes are what we refer to as hybrid parachutes. The drag surfaces are nylon, but then the structural grid, how we take the drag on that nylon surface and transmit it down to the vehicle, is made of Kevlar. And Kevlar is quite a bit stronger and stiffer and it just completely different material than the drag surfaces are. So the CPAS system is designed to safely recover the crew with just two mains deployed. The problem with deploying the backup chute after you deploy the first two chutes is you have to negotiate the chute that's already out there. So what we chose to do and what Apollo chose to do was to deploy the backup chute with the main system itself. And as a result, we get a much softer landing when all the parachutes work properly. But both systems were designed to land with just two main parachutes functioning. When we did the paddleboard test at White Sands, I was quite scared. But I wasn't scared for our system. I was scared for the repositioning after the rockets took off the capsule and repositioned it. It was perfect. That, that thing reoriented like it was on rails. And I, I swear to you, this, this huge relief came over me when the cover came off, because I thought, wow, we're not done, but we're done. I know my, this system's gonna work. Tune in to NASA TV for the next live mission update. For more on the science of the mission and resources for students and educators, head to stem.nasa.gov slash Artemis. Follow the mission online on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and get the latest updates from the Artemis blog at blogs.nasa.gov slash Artemis. Subscribe for more space. space, space, space.